it's Karen Berniston here with a bonus card making with dies video for the month. We are doing a blog hop today. This is with our design team. We are focusing on our November 2019 release and one of the new pop-ups is called the parcel pop-up. The parcel pop-up is very generic because it has no theme. It has an extra mechanism behind it that just slides something up and out of the box as the card opens. And I thought it would be fun to play with a window card so that as the snowman slides up, another one is revealed behind him. Okay, using a pretty heavy white cardstock, I've cut a piece four and a half inches by five and a half inches and scored it at four and a half inches so that I have a one inch flap along the bottom. Okay, so this is going to be a bottom fold card with a clear front. So I'm using some graphics plastic in a 0.02 that comes with a liner on both sides that I need to remove. And then I've just used my strong tape runner to attach that to the flap of the card. Then I'll switch to my outer card, which is also four and a half inches, but this time a piece that's eight inches tall, scored at an inch and a half from the top and six inches from the top. Now this is the time for me to check if my inner card will fit in my outer card and nothing gets bunched up in any folds because I could adjust my inner card a little bit by cutting some of the white cardstock away to make it a little shorter. Okay, but it fits nicely, so I'm going to remove my inner card and then I'm going to use the new flap and closure die set. Normally the flap is a die that you would cut separately and then glue to the card using the fold in tapered tab. But since my card is only four and a half inches wide, I can actually put my card through the die and only cut the flap out on the end of the card. So this is the one and a half inch part of the card. And I've just slid it through the die and then I can look and make sure that I feel like it's straight. What I want it to do is only cut that scoop flap into the card. Okay, so now I have that flap up at the top of the card. And then for the bottom, which is the two inch flap, I'm going to cut that using our nature edges die set so that I can have some nice stitched hills across the bottom of my card. Okay, card parts are ready. And now I'm going to switch to die cutting for my parcel pop-up. I've die cut the stitched square and the big square, and I'm going to glue those two together. So my adhesive is going around the perimeter of my stitched square, and then I'll just center and put that on my big square. And the reason I didn't use any adhesive in the middle is because then when I die cut out my rectangle, I can actually use the rectangles that come out of it. For placement on the rectangle die, I'm going to put it on the squares so that about an equal amount of square is showing on the right, bottom, and left side of the rectangle. So since I didn't use any adhesive between the layers in the middle, then those are actually two separate rectangles that I can use. One last bit of die cutting, which is just to grab a transparency, so just a regular printer transparency, nothing too thick or fancy and I'm going to die cut the main pop-up mechanism out of that transparency. Okay, from the transparency piece, I'm looking to isolate just the front of the pop-up. So I'm just following the score lines to cut out that piece that's basically kind of that trapezoid shape. On my full pop-up, if I work those folds, I can isolate that shape again. So folding the two folds to the back, then see there's the shape that I just cut out of the transparency. And if I flip that to the back, before I cut away some of my pop-up, I'm gonna go ahead and go around the perimeter with my tape runner because I'd rather have it sticky before I cut it away so that I don't have to try to get the tape runner into that really small spot. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my transparency. So this step is necessary because I want to be able to see through the pop-up to the back. So see, once I've worked the folds to bring the pop-up forward right here, then you can see how that pop-up box is going to look. And because the transparency is in place, then when I put my window box over the top, I'll be able to see through it. Okay, but before I can attach that, I need to work on the other half of my pop-up, which is my extra little sliding mechanism that goes behind it. So this is the piece that makes that mechanism and I want to find the score lines in it. So there are some score lines on the side that create reinforcing tabs. Then there are some score lines above and below that thicker part in the middle. And I want to work all those folds. 
and then the one at the top is a mountain the one next one down is a valley so that's kind of an accordion fold and then the little side reinforcing tab that actually glues in now I've been using my line cone neutral pH adhesive and my fine tip bottle we do sell both of those items on our website okay I had just clipped it to get it to set up now I don't want to do the long reinforcing tab yet the next thing I want to do is get my mechanism through this spot on the main pop-up so that I can work the little notches into the notches on the main pop-up so I wiggle one in then I hold it so it can't slip through and then I carefully pull the other notch around so that basically the notches are trapped in the notches and then that piece is going to accordion fold like this down into the flat position. And then my main box is going to fold the other way until it's in the flat position. And then with everything flat, I will be able to fold over that little small tab at the base and it will actually get trapped in between the layers when I fold over my reinforcing tab. Now, if you need a closer look at this, you can go watch the assembly video for the parcel pop-up because that shows this as well in great detail. One nice thing about this being a clear front pop-up today is that you can really see the mechanism behind there. So as the card opens, that little panel is going to come up and out of the box. And to that, I want to add a piece that's going to be like the slider arm piece. Now, normally I use the thinner rectangle that's in the set but the wider rectangle is the same length, so either one will work. So if you have a little bit wider item that you're going to be putting in the box, you can definitely choose to use the little bit wider rectangle for this. But the important thing is that it just lines up at the top. Now the tail of that rectangle, the other end, needs to be tucked into the box. So you can see that it's behind the clear panel. And what that'll do is it'll keep it coming up more straight. So, and it also defines the bottom edge of what you can put in the box. So you can't put anything lower than the bottom edge of that rectangle or else it'll get down into the folds. So just quickly checking my box here, I can see that it's mostly going to be clear in the rectangle. Just the bottom corners will have a little bit of white cardstock from the pop-up showing and I am okay with that. Okay, I want my adhesive on the clear front of the pop-up up at the top so I'll use a dry adhesive for that but then in the white perimeter I can go ahead and use glue and I'm just avoiding those two little areas where the corners are going to be showing through the window and I like to attach the box just a smidge above that bottom fold just to give it a little room in the finished card to fold down without bunching now on the back of the pop-up there is a little ledge here where the pop-up matches the back of the box and that has the potential to become a catch point depending on what you put on your slider arm. This is a good time to just add a little piece of clear tape over that ledge just to make it smoother so it can't catch your item. Okay, back on the card assembly real quick and let me get my inner card attached inside my outer card. So step one is going to be to attach the little snow flap at the bottom. So for that, I'll want my adhesive on the plastic part sticking within the area that's going to be hidden inside the card. So just a couple lines at the bottom there. And then just line up the folds and get the snow pressed to the front of the card. Then I can lift up the layers and switch to glue for attaching the paper to the paper for the whole back panel. And I like to position my card into the open position for this. So that's going to be a little bit past 90 degrees. And then it's going to fight me a little bit as I close the card. That's why I like glue for this because it can kind of slide a little bit and find a position where I can actually close that bottom flap without everything bunching up. Okay, time to add my pop-up inside the card. So I'll start by adding adhesive to the bottom of the pop-up. So that's this whole area here. And then I just want the ends of the pop-up to line up right in the fold of the card. And I'm just centering this, so I'm just looking out there on the sides to see if it looks like I have an equal amount on either side, just making sure that it's good and straight and that the ends are right in the fold. Okay, so when I go to attach the other half of the pop-up, I want to do that in the flat position, and I have to avoid the center area where the slider arm goes. So basically, I'm just going to show with a pencil here where the adhesive can go on the back of the pop-up to attach it. So all like kind of like an L and a backwards L, you can use the adhesive. Now that could be a strong tape, but I'm just going to use my glue. And just making sure everything stays flat, I'm going to close the other side of the card against that adhesive 
then I'll just flip it over, give it some time to set, and then carefully open it that first time, just making sure that it doesn't pop off of there. This is such a fun little peekaboo parcel look, and you can see how generic it is. You could definitely change this out and do it for any theme. Okay, before I go to decorate my pop-up, I'm going to finish out my closure. I found these hitch fasteners in my stash and I really wanted to use them. I do realize that that's a pretty thick piece, so it will require a bubble mailer when I go to mail it, but I felt like it was worth it. I buy my really small, very strong magnets from K&J Magnetics, and I'll put the link in the supply list in the description box below. But just a glue dot on the back of the hitch fastener and then a magnet into the glue dot. And then I can use the companion piece from the flap and closure die set to cover that all up with a decorative flap. To make sure I place the other magnet in the right position, I'll first just let it stick to the first magnet. Then I'm going to add that glue dot to the top of that other magnet, and then I just close the card and it will transfer the magnet to the plastic in the correct position. So you can see how that works. The flap closure comes down and just sticks to that magnet. My card today is going to have a snowman theme, and so in the snowman die set there is a decorative small snowflake that will be just perfect to cover up the magnet, just making sure that I place a snowflake on the front of the plastic and the back of the plastic so that they line up. And then I started making snowmen. Now if you need a refresher on the snowman die set, just this week I put up a video for this card and that taught how to assemble the snowman and change the look of their faces. The rectangle that's in the parcel pop-up makes a really good sign, so I went ahead and stamped it with the Let's Be Merry. That is a paper smooches stamp. Okay, sliding my snowman onto my rectangle, I can see that just at the very bottom, the little corners of my rectangle are going to show outside of his body. So I'll just take my scissors and go in and just snip those two little corners. Just a quick check, and yep, that will be perfect. Okay, so glue on the back of the snowman only as far up the snowman as will be covered by the rectangle. And then I just need to slide that in until the base lines up into that rectangle, and I'll just clip it so it gives it a chance for that glue to dry. Now my other snowman is going to go inside the box, but I want to look first to see how much I need to chop off the bottom to lower his head so that it'll show then as the first one slides up. Okay, so taking my clips off, that should be long enough, then I can go in there and judge, is that a good location for that snowman? And it looks like it's going to be perfect. One thing about adding an item to that slider arm is there's only a small area at the bottom that isn't part of the mechanism. So that's the only spot I can add adhesive. I'm just going to go in there with a glue dot on the base of that pop-up slider support. And then I'll just reach in there and press my snowman to it. And then here's where I have to kind of go carefully and make sure that the pop-up is going to work properly and not catch against that snowman. And I lucked out that on the first try, it's working wonderfully. How fun would this be in other themes? Like imagine with pictures, you could do a picture of say a graduate sliding up and then behind would be a picture of them starting kindergarten. Okay, from here it is just about continuing the decorations, but the only thing about this card having the clear front is you always have to be thinking about how it looks when it's closed and how it looks when it's open. So it's possible for me to add a snowflake that will look great when it's open, but then when it's closed, say it obscures this snowman's face. So just always work between open and closed as you decorate. That bigger snowflake is one of the charms out of the Winter Charms set. So I just had fun with snowflakes to finish out this card, just sprinkling them throughout the card. Anything that I attached to the plastic on the front, I put the same snowflake on the inside so that it would look pretty on both sides. And I also added holiday cheer from that same stamp set to the front of the card. My card measures four and a half inches square when closed, but it is going to probably need a bubble mailer because of the hitch fastener. But if I had swapped that out for say a button or something flatter, then this could just mail in an A7 envelope. Check the description box below this YouTube video for supply links and a link to the blog hop. Thanks for watching.
If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.